Hello, AP Physics students. This is Miss Nichols. And if this is the first time you've um, met me digitally, as it were, um, please don't be terrified by um, the fact that this is like an incredibly dry, fact driven lecture. Uh, I'm just trying to provide this as a resource for kids that um, want reminders about this stuff or uh, didn't take AP Physics 1 and need a little bit of a refresher or whatever this can be for you. I hope it is. Uh, but realize that, you know, in class, things are a ton more hands-on. I answer questions. I have drawings and pictures and all sorts of stuff. This, this, these, these lecture series are designed to just be like the most bare bones, most, most efficient possible way of showing you guys exactly what you need to know without anything else um, for background information just to make sure you have the most uh, success in this class. So with that preamble, uh, this is a refresher of kinematics or movement, depending on what your previous physics class is. Um, these tools or and equations that are going to come up in this lecture are uh, not super frequently found in AP Physics 2, but they do happen on, on occasion. And so I just want to make sure that you're familiar with them and they're on your equation sheet. So uh, I want to make sure that you know what variables, um, what symbols, etc. So before we get going, let's look at what essential questions this lecture is going to kind of address. Number one, what are the symbols, definitions, and units of the main four kinematics variables, which in my mind are distance, time, velocity, and acceleration, and what do the various math operators and subscripts that are used with them mean? Um, You've probably been exposed a little bit to subscripts and operators. They're heavily used in physics to try to give a little bit more physics, uh, physical meaning to the variables that we use. The second question is which of these are vectors and what is the significance of the sign of each um, value? A uh, vector is a number that has a value and also a direction. So left, right, north, x-axis, that kind of thing. Um, and the opposite of vector, the, the alternate to vector is a scalar, which is a number that's just a value without any kind of direction. Three, what are the kinematics equations and how do you decide which ones to use? Um, so there are a handful of equations on your equation sheet and I just want to make sure that you know what those equations are. And then the last one is just sort of a knowledge piece. What is the value of the acceleration of all objects due to Earth's gravitational field? So these are the questions we're going to be covering in this particular lecture. If you're really familiar with them, you could maybe go through this fast or skip it. Um, if you feel like you're hazy on any of those, I would definitely recommend paying attention, taking notes the best you can. The first variable we're going to talk about is displacement. Um, displacement actually has a specific physics meaning that is different than distance, but in this class that difference is not super important, so you may hear them used kind of interchangeably. Um, when you see equations for these things, uh, in the physics classes I teach, I always use D for displacement, but on your equation sheet you will often see displacement written as an X, uh, just to denote that it's movement in an axis, and specifically the X axis, although it can be any axis. Or sometimes you see an R, um, which means radius. Radius doesn't have to be just the size of a circular object. It could be the distance between two circular objects. But in any case, all three of those symbols can be used to represent distance or displacement. The definition of this is the one you've been using your whole life, I'm sure, how far an object is from another object or a reference point. Displacement is a vector which means that you have to specify what direction the displacement is happening in. Um, you may get, I mean, so there's a difference between a D equals positive four and a D equals negative six. Specifically, that distance is what direction from the reference point your object is located. You get to decide for yourself what positive and negative are, but um, typically we use you know, like on Earth, on the surface of Earth, positive is up away from the surface and negative is down towards the surface. Uh, and usually on a piece of paper, positive will also be to the right um, along the x-axis and negative is to the left. But you can set those up however you want as long as you are consistent throughout your problems. The SI unit, we in physics will almost always be using the meter. Um, 
So we're kind of big scale objects by and large. And obviously if you're asked to come up with an experiment in which you need to measure distance, the tool that you would want to be using is a meter stick. The second variable that's really relevant in kinematics is time. Time is always going to be either a T or a delta T. Um, and in fact, even when it's just a T in an equation, usually delta T is what it's referring to because it's how long something's taking. It almost never is like, you know, the time is 12 o'clock that we don't care as much about that as the amount of time something's taking. So in an equation, when you see T, it usually refers to as, it refers to delta T or the amount of time that an event um, is taking. Time is a scalar, so it's not a vector. Uh, it's always positive. We, we never move back in time. I would never say time to the north, etc. It's just always a positive value. The SI unit for time is going to be the second in physics. And if you were measuring it, you would typically use a stopwatch, although there are other tools that you might be familiar with as well. The third kinematics variable is velocity. Um, velocity is similar to speed, but the difference is that velocity has a direction as well. Uh, the symbol that you'll see is always a V, although sometimes in the equation sheet you'll see it V sub X with a little X next to it. Um, and that just tells you that you need to have um, all of your vector variables in the same direction. So that refers to velocity in a specific direction. The definition colloquially is how fast something is moving. Um, but keep in mind that you also have to indicate the direction the object is moving somehow in your answer. Positive and negative velocities refer to motion in opposite directions. So if you're going up when you're positive, then negative velocity is down. If you're going right when you're positive, negative is to the left. Um, although remember that you get to define those yourselves. The SI unit for velocity is the meter every second. Uh, I prefer that to meter per second because it really has, gives a little bit more physical meaning to the word uh, and it's written with an M over an S. Velocity is typically measured with either a motion sensor that can kind of measure and calculate velocity directly for you or a combination of meter sticks and stopwatches that you could use to find the distance and find the amount of time it takes to move. The fourth kinematics variable is one that you're very familiar with if you took AP Physics 1. If you did not take AP Physics 1, and only have had freshman physics, depending on the year that you took it, we either talked about acceleration or we didn't. Um, but you probably have a little bit of a sense of what that means. Um, in any case, the symbol for acceleration is A. And the definition of acceleration is how much the velocity of an object changes every second. So we're specifically referring to objects that are either speeding up or slowing down if we have an acceleration value. Um, just moving does not mean we're accelerating because we could be moving at a constant speed like a car on the highway at 60 miles an hour and we're not accelerating if our velocity is not changing every second. Acceleration is also a vector variable, so we have positives and negatives, ups, downs, north, south accelerations. Um, but it's a little bit tricky to keep track of what the signs mean. It's different than velocity. And I think this is one of the biggest misconceptions in physics is that if you're moving in a positive direction, you have a positive acceleration. What positive acceleration means is that the velocity value is becoming more positive on a number line. It's becoming a bigger number. Um, and that could be going from 10 to 11. That's obviously becoming more positive, but going from negative 30 to negative 20 is also moving in that same direction. So negative 20 um, is slower than negative 30, but it's a more positive number. So that would also be a positive acceleration, which means that positive acceleration can do two things to an object. If you're already moving in the positive direction and you have positive acceleration, then you're going to be speeding up. That's pretty straightforward. Your velocity is becoming more positive. However, if you are moving in the negative direction, then positive acceleration will be slowing you down because your velocity is getting closer to zero as it becomes more positive. Um, and that tends to be something that really trips people up. Um, negative acceleration also can mean either thing. It can mean either speeding up or slowing down. So don't, don't fall in the habit of thinking that negative acceleration always means you're slowing down. 
Um, if you're moving in the positive direction, negative acceleration will slow you down. But if you're already moving in the negative direction, then negative acceleration is going to actually speed you up because it's going to make your velocity more negative, which is faster and faster and faster, right? From negative 20 to negative 30 to negative 40, we're getting faster and faster with that negative acceleration. So this is a concept that's worth working on a little bit. Um, if you are unclear about what's going on here, I would urge you to read the book that I linked to um, or also come and see me at tutor time and I'm happy to run through a whole bunch of examples for you individually if you need help with this important concept. Um, one kind of cool thing about acceleration has to do with the acceleration of gravity, which you're all very familiar with because you've held objects up in the air and dropped them. Um, and the reason those objects fall is because that object has mass and Earth has mass, and that means that they are gravitationally attracted to each other. Now, the more mass an object has, the more it's attracted to Earth. And you sort of could sense this because if you put a... Um, a mouse on top of your head, it doesn't hurt very much, it's not being pulled down very hard, but if you put an elephant on top of your head, it's going to be really attracted to Earth, it's really going to be pulled down hard, it's going to hurt. Um, however, there is, on the other side of the coin, the bigger the mass of an object, the more difficult it is to actually speed that object up or cause it to accelerate, right? So that mouse, if I give the mouse a push, it's easy to make that mouse fly, if I give the elephant a push, it doesn't move very much at all. So we kind of have this balanced uh, um, situation of all objects are pulled towards Earth, bigger objects are pulled harder, but bigger objects are harder to accelerate. And those two effects end up canceling each other out. Um, which means the net result is that everything on Earth experiences the same acceleration from gravity. Uh, if I drop a bowling ball and a ping pong ball, they should fall exactly right next to each other, speeding up exactly the same rate the entire time. Um, and so that is one of the constants that we're going to be using a lot in this class. Uh, it is known as um, little g because it's such a commonly used value that we've given it its own variable. But little g is another way of saying the acceleration of any object on Earth. And the value of little g for everything is negative 10 meters per second every second. Um, that means that when you drop an object, it's going to change its velocity by 10 meters per second in the downward direction for every second that it falls. Before we start looking at some actual equations that are on your equation sheet, I want to refresh you on some of the math operators and subscripts that you'll be seeing on those equations. These are crucial and you should not ignore them. If you see a symbol um, next to one of the variables or as a subscript, you really have to truly understand what that symbol means or you won't be able to use the equation at all. So the four math operators that are commonly seen in these equations are that triangle, which means delta. You all should have seen that plenty of times in other physics classes, but it means the change in value of a variable. The way you calculate that is the final value minus the initial, uh, and that will tell you how much a certain variable, so distance or time or velocity, has changed over the course of the problem that you're solving. The second math, math operator is that um, funky looking E, which is the Greek letter sigma, and sigma means net or total of a variable. So when you see that, you're going to be adding together all the values of that variable um, to before you use it in the equation. The third thing that isn't on the equation sheet, but you'll see when you take physics in college, is a bar. And that bar is drawn above the value of a variable. So it would be like, you know, an A with that little bar above it. Um, that bar means the average value of that variable. Sometimes you'll see average as a subscript instead. And sometimes on this equation sheet, they just don't put any kind of operator or symbol, which kind of drives me crazy. So if you see a variable um, by itself without any kind of math operator, you should assume that we're talking about the average value of that variable. So a plane B means average velocity. A plane A is average acceleration. The other thing that you'll see on some of the equations is 
some vertical bars that are surrounding an expression. When you see that, that means take the absolute value of that expression. That typically happens when um, negative and positive signs will pop out based on the math, but um, they don't necessarily mean what they look like they mean. So you just take the absolute value and then you kind of work out what the, uh, the value of it is intended to express. The second thing that you see regularly on these equations is our subscripts. Uh, so little letters or numbers below and to the right of a value. If you see a subscript that's a zero or an O or an I, um, that means we're talking about the initial value of a variable. So V sub I or V sub O would mean the starting velocity of whatever object you're, you're uh, interested in. If you don't see any subscript, or you see a little tiny f, um, that tends to mean the final value of the variable. So um, uh, an, a v without any subscript would probably mean final velocity. If you see an x subscript, uh, that just tells you that the variable that we're talking about is a vector, so the direction of that variable matters. And um, it usually means that you want it to be consistent for all the variables in the equation. So all the variables in the equation will have a little sub x, and that just means we're only interested in motion in the same direction. So in other words, you can't mix and match. I can't have um, a velocity in the x direction and use my acceleration in the y direction to know anything about what the velocity in the x direction is doing. The only way you can use that equation is if all of the variables are moving in the same um, coordinate axis, that's the only way you can use um, that particular equation. So the equation sheet that I'll give you in class will have a chunk of equations for kinematics, and you really actually only need to know two equations for kinematics, and those two are shown. They're basically the definitions of velocity and acceleration. Um, that equation, that first one says that the average velocity is equal to the change in distance of an object divided by the amount of time it takes. And the second equation says that the average acceleration of an object is equal to the change in velocity of the object divided by the amount of time it takes. Uh, those are the only two kinematics equations I personally ever use because if you really understand the math operators, um, you can actually solve every kinematics problem with just those two equations and combining them algebraically anyway uh, to solve for whatever variable you're missing. However, on the official AP equation sheet, they actually don't give you those two, so they're probably worth memorizing, in my opinion. Um, the equations that are given on the equation sheet will are, look a lot more complicated, but they will actually save you some time if you have a specific thing that you're trying to solve for. So the three equations that you are given are um, shown below. The top one, with all those subscripts and operators that you need to understand basically says that the final velocity of an object is equal to the initial velocity of an object plus the acceleration of the object times time, keeping in mind that they all have to be in the same axis because they all have an x next to them. So that first variable is final velocity even though it doesn't have an f on it. You'd use this equation if you were trying to figure out how fast an object was going given a known acceleration, typically. The second equation um, says that the final location or distance of an object is equal to the initial distance of the object plus the initial velocity of the object times time plus one half times the acceleration of the object times time squared. Uh, remember that x can be a variable we use for displacement or distance as it is in this case. And that first x without the subscript is the final x location. Um, and then all the little zeros mean initial uh, distance and velocity. The third equation they give you is a useful one because it's, it doesn't involve time. It's combined those two equations to get rid of the time variable, basically. And it is used to calculate um, how fast objects are moving when they accelerate over a certain distance. So that equation basically can be read the final velocity of an object squared is equal to the initial velocity of that object squared plus 2 times the acceleration of the object times 
the change in distance or how much distance the object is being accelerated for. That x minus x naught is the same as delta x, right? It's the final distance minus the initial distance. So that's what that third equation would be used for. How do you decide which equation to use? Well, usually I make a list of all the variables that I know and what I want to know, and then I look for an equation that allows me to find the thing I want, hopefully without any um, variables that I either don't know or can't find. That's typically my mode for, for finding those things. All right. All right, so that's it for kinematics. Quickest kinematics lecture ever. Um, you might want to take a minute and go back to the essential questions and make sure you can answer them kind of on your own. Um, and uh, if you can do all of those things, then probably you're in good shape for the entire year. And if you can't do all those things already, that's okay as well. I'm not really expecting you guys to um, come in remembering all this stuff. I'm happy to work with you and help you. Um, but revisiting this lecture or reading the um, the books that I've linked or the pages chapters of the books that I've linked to are going to be pretty important to make sure that you start the semester um, on the right track. Thank you.